Hey everyone, Yudi here from Mossy Earth and in this video I will share an update about coral natural recruitments in our project sites. But before we start, I would like to give a quick recap of um, what we've been doing up until this point. Our project area is divided into six sections and up until today we are currently working on area 5. Last year we did an annual monitoring data to show the percentage of coral cover and rubble cover on each of the area. And the result is as follows. We will treat this data as a new baseline. So annually, when we take the monitoring data again, later this year, we can compare the percentage of coral cover and the rubble cover on each of the areas. And now up the speed until today. To start the year, we are counting our uh, new coral recruitment that settle in our project sites. So the way to do this, I'm going to swim with a U-pattern swim on each of the area to record and take pictures and videos of the new coral recruit that I can find. It begins with coral reproduction. Some coral species releases sperm and eggs into the water columns and fertilize externally, which then turn into a coral larvae, free swimming and floating with the currents. Some other species brood uh, internally, so they capture sperm from the same uh, species and do the fertilizations internally and releases a ready-to-settle uh, coral larvae. These larvae drift with currents, searching for the perfect uh, place or uh, surface to finally attach themselves and call it home. When coral larvae detect chemical cues from Christos coralline algae, they settle onto a hard surface like a reef rock uh, substrate or even rubble. And once they do this, when they land into a surface, this is the critical moment for them. If they fail to settle, they die within weeks. If they successful to attach, they will start metamorphose into a coral polyps and begin secreting calcium carbonate skeleton to anchor themselves into the substrate. Up until this point, in the first 8 to 12 weeks, they are still vulnerable to a grazing fish, the competition with algae, or other environmental stress. But when they survive this, they will turn into a feasible recruit and become a juvenile coral colonies. So imagine, they start their life as a free-floating coral larvae up in the open water, they are vulnerable to fish predators and other invertebrate predators and only a few that survive this journey and become the final stage of the larvae and even fewer able to find a place to settle. If they settle into a loose rubble, their uh, survival chance will drop drastically because of the constant movement of, moving of the rubble. If they uh, land on to an immovable uh, substrate like our structures, they still need to face the challenge that I mentioned earlier, so before they can change into a juvenile uh, coral colonies. So I think you'll be surprised on the percentage how much is this coral larvae actually survive in the wild. It's less than 0.1%. Let's come along on my dive to find and count how many we have coral recruits at our sites. Let's uh, celebrate their incredible journey until they become part of our reefs. In total, we found 120 uh, new natural coral recruitment at Area 1. This is like a very big number, I think after a year and a half of restorations. And I'm sure there is uh, more, but because the coral already uh, grew covering the structures and I couldn't uh, look underneath uh, the structure, so I skip that part where the coral is covering the structure a lot. To avoid double calculations or double countings, I did the swim myself and search for the new settlements. And within that 120 that I found, 
there is um, Acroporas and what it looks like from the Pochilopora genera. The rest is a small amount of porites, also grow naturally at our structures, which is very cool. Especially at some area where we transplant uh, more porites branching coral. In area one, we found the biggest amount of coral settlements. Also, we can uh, see the structures at area one um, covered with the coralline algae, which is very suitable uh, surface for uh, coral larvae to settle. The main reasons we keep record of these findings is because natural recruitment is reflects the ability of the reef to recover naturally. And so it's the, the indications or the indicator of reef health. And the other is to measure success of our restoration efforts with a new generations of corals uh, gradually taking over and naturally settles. So the result of this finding is in area one, we counted 97 Pochilopora coral settlements and 19 porites and three Acropora. And in area two, there are, there are 25 Pochilopora and six porites and five Acroporas. And there are two others that outside of these uh, families. And for area three and the rest, because they are still very new, are going to count it starting maybe this year. Thanks for watching these updates. And I hope you are as excited as we are looking at these new coral recruitments. And if you want to support our project, you can do so by becoming a Mossy Earth member at our website, mossy.earth. Until next update, guys. Cheers.